The European elections just happened and the Brexit party won big league. Is, is he saying big league, right? Trump says big league. Anyway, I'm making a joke. This is a major, major victory for right-wing nationalists and populists, whatever. Not necessarily the same, but kind of the same. Of course, there are many people on the left who are scared and outraged and call Farage the worst of the worst. But I got to admit, I don't think simply because you like your country and want sovereignty over your borders that makes you, you know, a fringe far-right extremist. No, it just makes you a nationalist and maybe a right-wing populist, whatever. The Brexit party is new. And I'm, I don't know what they're actually for, except for Brexit. They want to leave the European Union. Now, here's the thing. This is a major victory for, for right-wing nationalists. However, Brexit party now tops national election poll. Prime Minister Farage? This has been something people have kind of joked about for a little while. I have another article called Fact, uh, from, from Channel 4 Fact Check. Will it be Prime Minister Farage? And here's the thing. A lot of people are like, no, no, no. The Brexit party is clearly winning in the European elections because people in the UK want to leave the European Union. But polls were showing that for the national elections, which actually means like within the country of the United Kingdom, the uh, Brexit was like behind the, the Labour and the Conservatives or whatever. Now, apparently, that's not the case. But let's read a little bit. So, so here's the thing. This first story from Human Events says, Nigel Farage and his Brexit party have topped a Westminster general election poll. Could we be looking at Prime Minister Nigel Farage? Wow. Britain's new Brexit party has taken another step towards its motto goal to change politics for good. As an opinion poll places the Farage group in first place for a Westminster Parliament national general election. Wow. Wow. New research by Opinium puts Farage's party first in Westminster parliamentary seats with 26% of the national vote. The Labour Party, supposedly Her Majesty's official opposition, pulls in 22% while the Conservative Party languishes on 17%. The news follows the dramatic Brexit party victory at the recent European parliamentary election. So here we go. This is crazy because Brexit in the last polls I saw was, was like third. Now they're number one. So the way um, my understanding is it's rep it's proportional representation in the UK, meaning they have a bunch of different parties and you vote for the party and then the party appoints their ministers or their uh, members of parliament or whatever. But uh, we also, but, but I guess because Brexit will be the biggest party, I don't know how it works, but Nigel, Nigel Farage being the leader of the party will become the prime minister. Putting this in terms of seats in the House of Commons, the Brexit party would end a general election in the UK with 306 seats, just 20 short of a majority. <laughs> oh my God. Labor would have 205. The Conservative Party would win just 26. And the Liberal Democrats would experience a small boost with 33. Raheem Kassam says, holy crap. The Brexit Party is now topping the polls for a national general election. If you, th okay, so, so I, I could be wrong about this. You'd probably want to watch something from like Carl Benjamin Sargon because he's actually, you know, British. But this sounds like a double Trump, okay? Brexit was their version of like Trump, okay? Brexit happened, everyone went, gasp, egad, how could this happen? Trump happened, and then everyone said, gasp, egad, how could this happen? And now, <laughs> if this, if, uh, look, my God, this is crazy. I'm, 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 I'm kind of dumbfounded, you know? Because think about it. They won Brexit. Three years later, nothing happens. The Brexit party sweeps the European elections in the UK. Biggest party, massive victory. And now if it comes to be that in the national election, a party built around nothing but Brexit wins. Oh my God. I don't even know what the Brexit party is for outside of the fact that they're for Brexit. They're like seven weeks old. Insane. They say two weeks ago, Human Events reported the comments by former House Chief Stra uh, Strategist uh, Stephen Bannon, who told Human Events Editor-in-Chief Raheem Kassam during a radio interview, if there is a general election in the fall, we might be talking about Prime Minister Nigel Farage. Mr. Bannon's predictions may well be coming true. The Brexit party faces another test of popularity and resources on June 6th when a by-election, a special election for a seat in the House of Commons is voted upon by residents in Peterborough. Farage and the Brexit party have descended on the town, hoping to make it the party's first seat in Westminster. Adam Drummond from Opinion said, all of the big winners from the European elections have seen some sort of boost. 
with the Brexit party adding another two points to move into first place, while Labour have fallen back significantly. While the Lib Dems have experienced a boost, the underreported story from the elections and since then has been the Greens, who have gained eight points since our last poll. While the Brexit party and the Lib Dems have been taking votes from Leavers and Remainers respectively, the Greens are unique in taking votes from both sides of the Brexit divide. The Greens are big environmentalists. So here's what'll be interesting. Let's take a look at what Channel 4's fact check had to say just a few few days ago. They say, with almost every result in, we can confirm that these elections have been a big success for the Brexit party. Nigel Farage's new party won 32% of the popular vote or more than 5.2 million votes. Under the proportional representation system used to allocate seats, that means the Brexit party gets the most MEPs in Britain. Look, I'm not here to cheer for any side to win or lose. You guys know my politics are like kind of in the middle, leaning a little bit to the left. There are some Democrats I'm supporting. Uh, Tulsi Gabbard, Andrew, Andrew Yang. They're very principled individuals who I can respect. Not perfect people, but you know, they both defended free speech. Uh, um, they, I, there's things I like about them. However, if, if uh, uh, Republicans, Trump, if uh, Brexit, right-wing nationalists are winning, I'm not losing my mind and ripping out, you know, pulling on, my, pulling on what little hair I have and ripping out my teeth and shrieking and, and expressing my derangement syndrome. I'm not a crazy person. I simply think, okay, well, they're winning. What does that mean? And what do the people want? Welcome to democratic, you know, uh, um, representation. We live in a republic in the U.S. It's a parliamentary system in the U.K., but I understand people are going to vote. The votes elect representatives. Representatives vote a certain way, and if that means Trump wins because of the electorates, well, th- like that's the will of the people under the rules everyone is playing by. There's no reason for me to lose my mind. So I'm sitting here kind of shocked. You know, I, I guess I'm kind of uh, tepid when it comes to who I think should win. I'm not this o- overarching partisan hack who's like, this group must win. No, it's kind of like, wow, look at this. The right-wing nationalists are winning everything. I wonder why that's happening. Well, I'll tell you what. My frustration comes from my slight preference towards the left, but also the complete insanity and inefficiency of of these people on the left, okay? Here's the thing. If the left wins, whatever. If the right wins, whatever. There are certain things on the left that I think are better than things on the right, and that's why I lean a little bit. There are certainly things on the right that are better than things on the left. Many conservatives have better ideas, stronger opinions, and logic and facts. Many people on the left also have logic and facts, but too often they do rely on emotion. It is what it is. But based on all of the research, I am not swayed by my emotions. I'm swayed by the data. So I'm kind of a centrist. And I think that makes sense. You know, not, uh, um, if, if, you know, for, like, here's how I feel. I read so much. I'm like, that's a really good point from this liberal. That's a really good point from this conservative. I think there's a middle ground. And more importantly, I'm concerned with making sure we maintain a social cohesion and can live together even if we hold different views. So it makes me a rather centrist individual. What frustrates me about the left is the embracing of the insanity, the breaking of the rules, the double standards, and their failure. When a woman throws a milkshake at a politician, okay, yeah, that guy's going to win. You you, you know, it is widely believed Ronald Reagan won because someone tried to kill him. Because attempts, and Bolsonaro too, someone plunged a knife into the side of Bolsonaro. I'm pretty sure it's been a while, but yeah, yeah, right? When you do this, they generate massive sympathy, attention, and people rally around them because it's, 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 it's insane. So what do you think it is? It, I'm not going to act like it's the same, you know, same level of danger when you throw a milkshake at Farage, but it doesn't make you look good. It makes you look bad. And it's the most mind-numbing, mind-numbingly frustrating thing for me to see this over and over again. I know I'm supposed to be reading this fact check about what they think. Let's read their conclusion. Fact check verdict. There are two reasons why the EU results don't tell us much about what will happen in the next parliamentary elections. People vote differently in Westminster elections, and the votes they cast don't win as many seats as you might expect. The website Electoral Calculus tries to solve both problems by using the share of the vote suggesting, su- suggested by opinion polling, not EU elections, and then running it through a model of the first-past-the-post system. The site's current prediction is that like UKIP in 2015, the Brexit party will only win one seat in the general election. Of course, we have to heavily caveat all this by saying that opinion polls have been wrong many, many times. We know how that game is played. And the political landscape is changing so quickly that only a very brave pundit would call the results (laughs) of the next general election with too much confidence. They say, however, update. Electoral calculus have just published a new analysis where they assume a higher vote share for the Brexit party and predict the party could get as many as 15 vote, uh, votes 
in the general election, that would make the party the fifth largest in parliament. Perhaps. They're the experts. But we are seeing some good news for the Brexit party. Maybe there will be a prime minister Farage. I kind of don't think so. But hey, man, I have no idea what's going on anymore because the polls were wrong every single step of the way. Man, Brexit, Brexit party, Trump. Wow. Well, the Brexit party polls were right. So maybe they corrected their their metrics. I guess we'll see what happens. But it would be a a damn funny thing. And I got to say, with all the victories of the right wing nationalists, I would not be shocked. Thanks for hanging out. I will see you all tomorrow at 10 a.m. YouTube.com slash Timcast. Um, more, uh, the podcast will be every day at 7 p.m. and I will see you all next time.